Hi, I'm Nathan Moss, and in this video, I'll guide you through making your first macro with Elephant Automation. This is Elephant Automation. In the left panel, we have all the tools we need to create our macro. A tool is a bunch of computer programming stuff all compressed into one little easy to use chunk. A tool usually has some inputs or parameters which you can use to change what exactly the tool does. A tool also has outputs which you can map to other tools' inputs. In the center panel is where we build and edit our macro. A macro is simply a bunch of tools with specific inputs and outputs executed in a particular order. Usually we call them tools when we refer to them generically, and steps when we talk about them specifically. In the right panel is where we adjust the inputs and the outputs of a particular step. Alright, let's get started making our very first macro. First, let's drag the execute command tool into the macro. This tool lets us execute a command as if it were in the Windows command line. We'll enter notepad into the command input so that when we execute this step, it'll open up an instance of Notepad. We will make sure the Define Window option is checked and give this instance of Notepad the name Notes. By naming our window, we can later use other steps to work on them by name. Now, let's add the Set Window Parameters tool to our macro. This tool lets us change the size and location of our window. Let's give our Notepad a height and width of 300 and an XY location of 100. Now, let's run our macro. First, we use the mouse to highlight the top step. The macro will start executing from whatever step is highlighted, but most often, you'll want to execute from the beginning. Then, we'll click on the Play Macro button. As you can see, Elephant Automation opens up an instance of Notepad, sets it to the correct size, and moves it to the correct location. Next, we'll want to add the mouse input and the keyboard input tools to our macro. This will let us click on the text editing portion of Notepad, and then we will be able to type into it. Let's set our coordinate system to Notes. This ensures that the mouse will be clicked with respect to the specific Notepad we have previously called Notes. We'll set both the X and Y location to 100. We'll leave the button in action as their, at their default settings to perform a left click. In the keyboard tool, we enter whatever it is we want to be automatically typed into Notepad. Okay, now let's run our macro again and ensure that it works like we expected. Perfect. Now, let's create three more Notepads and arrange them in a nice grid so that each Notepad takes up a quarter of the screen. Okay, we have four Notepads, but let's be sure to give them different names. To get them to each take up a quarter of the screen, we have to know the screen resolution of the monitor. So let's add a Get Screen Resolution step to our macro. The Get Screen Resolution tool does exactly what it seems, in that it gets the screen resolution and returns the width and height of the screen so that we can use it as a base for when we want to change the size and location of our windows. To map the output of the Get Screen Resolution tool to the inputs on our Set Window Parameter tools, we simply put the step number and the output name inside a pair of percentage signs like this. Now, let's do the same for the height. And we can't forget that we want half the screen width and half the screen height. Now we'll set the X and Y location of the first notepad window to 0 and 0. And then we'll copy and we'll paste the set windows parameters tool three more times once for each notepad. Then we make sure to set each window parameters tool to its specific window so that all the notepads are represented and acted on. And then we'll go and change all the X and Y locations so that they're put in each corner of the, the screen. Now, let's copy and paste the mouse and keyboard steps, one for each notepad. We also have to change the coordinate system in each mouse step to refer to a different notepad. Now, 
after we get done making all of these modifications, what we're going to do is we're going to run the macro and see if all the changes we have work as we expected. All right, works perfectly. Now let's use the group tool to clean up our macro and make it easier to read. We just move all the steps we want into the group and then we can rename the group something a little more descriptive for our particular application. This is nice, but for a little added functionality, let's automatically close all the windows. This will show us how to navigate through the program menus using the keyboard. We use the Alt button to get the menu bar, the F button for the file menu, the X button for the exit option, and the N button so we don't save the file. So Alt F X N. So we add a mouse input and a keyboard input just like we did before. And then we add Alt F X N where the exclamation point stands for the Alt button. Now, let's copy and paste them three more times and add them to their own group for legibility. Let's make sure we're pointing to the right notepads. Alright, let's run the macro and see how we did. Works perfectly. Thanks for watching this video. Get started making your first macro as soon as possible. And if you have any more questions, check out the elephantautomation.com website or our YouTube channel for more help. Also, if you found this useful or have any comments, feel free to comment on, like, or share this video. See you next time.